one thing that happens when a country is colonized and the language is gradually lost is that there are remnants of what was there before. And England is no different because English is not the native language of England. Today I want to show you some of the river names in England and how they connect to Welsh and Cornish and where they come from in Celtic sources because there's quite a few of these in England and river names are one of those things that hold on the longest. Just take the name Mississippi for example. That's Native American. I'm Ben Llewellyn. Today we're going through the rivers of England. There are quite a lot of these, so I've just selected a handful of rivers to show you. Some of these with common elements that you can trace directly to Welsh or Cornish. Let's take the biggest one first, the River Thames. In Welsh, that's Tafwys. And that T-A-M and that T-A-F, which sounds like a V, that's common across, well, Cornwall and Wales. You get rivers like Tamar and Tav, Tavi, and these have that initial element, the Tav or Tam, and what that means is murky, dark, often kind of a, suggests a brooding depth to the river, and that's where Thames comes from. It suggests a very muddy element, a deep mud to it. Another river which clearly has a Celtic source is the River Trent further north, kind of arcing around the southern bit of the Peak District. And it is the River Trannon in Welsh. And often you get that double N showing that there used to be an NT there. And so the English version probably hung on to a bit of the old element as it was changing in Welsh to become Trannon. And what this comes from, we think, is Trosint literally over the path, the pathway. And what that would have come from before that, Trisantona. And you notice that S in there, and there's an H that got lost. That's because in Welsh there was a shift between H and S. So hint from kind of a pathway in Welsh came from an earlier word scent. And that ona at the end, that's feminine. All rivers in Welsh are feminine. Like Cornish and the Celtic languages generally. So literally what the river Trent means is through pathway intensified feminine. It's quite old, so people thought differently. Derwent. This one's easy, and there's, there's a couple, there's more than one river in England called Derwent. And you get Derwent water up in Cumbria. This literally means oaks, just oak trees. The E-N-T, that's an old plural form in Welsh that you, you get quite often. And we Welsh speakers, we know perfectly well what that means today. But we don't say it quite much anymore. It's more of poetic. It sounds rather affected to say it now, but we would know what Derwent means. Oaks. And there are a lot of oak trees in England. As you can see from this data here, most of my viewers are still not subscribed to this channel, so please do so if you're visiting and haven't subscribed yet. Down in the southwest of England, the river Parrot. Not the bird. But this, we think, comes from Parad, or a word that would have been very close to it. it may have been Parad in the Cornish, what would become Cornish at that time. It would have been an accent rather than a language connecting these to Welsh and Cornish. And what Parad means is a partition usually dividing two rooms, but in this context, it was the partition between the kingdom of the native Britons and the kingdom of the incoming Saxons and Wessex. The river of partition, kind of an agreed boundary between these two peoples and kingdoms. And this would have been, I think, the, the late 
6th, early 7th century, possibly, that this boundary existed between them. So it's quite old. And it makes sense that that T would have hung on at the end, because that would have been as that Cornish dialect was breaking further up into a language. There is also the possibility that this comes from Pedrida. Literally in Cornish would mean four flows. Four flows. That could be what it means. I'm going to go with the river of partition meaning, but just to let you know, it could mean that as well. The river Tao. This means smooth or placid. And this is interesting because if you say Tao in Welsh, that literally means be quiet. There's a stillness element there. Tawaluch. Quietness. And just to the north of this, there's a, a river called Torridg. And that Torbit is related in Indo-European to Torrent. It's a gushing, a hard rushing, quite loud. So one river's Tor and the other river's Tau. And in English, I think that's Ta, but in Celtic languages, that would certainly be a Tau sound. The river Uiz, well, there's two, the greater and the lesser. And this probably, we can't be sure here, comes from Uitse, which would be a proto brythonic Celtic, even before that. And this is a cognate with Wishke in Irish or Scots Gaelic for water, which came to give us the word for whiskey. And it's interesting that this means wet, not water. And it's also interesting that this would have covered much of the Fenland, which was drained over three centuries ago and more. And that the Welsh word for the North Sea is Mor Eith. And I'm wondering if actually the names of these two rivers was Eith at one point. And it was of recognition of it being attached to this body of water, which was much further inland at the time when Welsh speakers were near it, when the name came into prominence. We may have a connection to the North Sea there going on. The River Severn. This is quite beautiful, partially because the English word is actually probably older than the Welsh one, even though they come from the same meaning. There's this S and H shift again, so whatever Severn in English, and Havren, Alvon Havren in Welsh. And there's that S and H shift. But what it comes from, in Latin, you had Sabrina. And this would have been a, a, a river goddess, we think. And it would have been a V sound. But in Latin, you often get switches between B and V. And with that, Severina would have come from, before that, Samrosina, which literally means the fallow land of summer. And this makes sense in two instances. One, the tides can often be much lower around the Severn at that time of year. And two, Saura is the Irish word for summer. And Irish never went through that sound shift of the H that Welsh did. Before that happened, the Saxons came in, heard that name, took it, and the Welsh changed then into Havran. So it's a river goddess of fallow river fields, basically. Hey, if you're enjoying this content, hit that like button it catapults the algorithm and helps a lot. Thanks. I don't know how this is pronounced in English, but for a Welsh speaker, it looks a lot like Dithon. Now I'm guessing in English it's Dudden or Duden? Dudden, I guess. But there are two elements there for a Welsh speaker are really easy to see. D, which is black, which is a very old word. I mean, we're going way back. And Don, which would come from Din, which is related to the word for city, Dinos. And this is usually a stronghold on a hill, perhaps. And like 
you're familiar with the word done, maybe. And what we have here, potentially, is black settlement or black fort. But it could also be related to the word for wave, tom. It could be a black river of waves. In any case, the, the D element is certainly Old Welsh. I'm not sure about the latter bit. The river Y. It's interesting that it doesn't have the G at the beginning because the earliest record of this is from the 9th century and it was Gui. And Welsh for this river is Avon Gui, the river of Gui. And what Gui means is kind of a meandering water. And if you go to that part of the world along the, the border between Wales and England where it flows through just above Torvan, the breaking of stone. It's a very to and fro area where there's meandering waters. You've seen me use Avon a couple times, and I should point that out, just how many avon rivers with this name Avon there are in England. I'm not even indicating them all here. That's just a few, the bigger ones. And what this is, is the river river. The Saxons and Angles who moved in did not learn the native language, but the Welsh who would have been speaking to them would have said, that's Avon D, that's Black River there. So they took on the first element, thinking that Welsh worked like their language, that river came after the name of it, which it didn't. So we have a whole host of rivers in England named River. You really should learn the language of the country that you move to so that these things don't happen and you lose the name of rivers. Tain. This gives us the town name Tainma. And this comes from Welsh, well, Brythonic. A cognate in Welsh, Tain, to spread and to sprinkle in some uses. And that's what this means, a sprinkling, almost a trickling like water. It became a word for water. And you get Tain up in the north of England, which is of the same origin word, Tain. A sprinkling water. And in Welsh state you get tiny. T-A-E-N-U. And this means to spread, but you can also say that you can tiny, you can kind of spread water or splashing. It's not so much in the, that use today, but you can use it that way. It does come from that. And that's where these words for these rivers come from. The river X. This comes from Brythonic Iska, which is water, or flowing water. And you get a couple of these here and there through England. A smaller river is the River Test. You don't need to worry about an exam. This comes from Brythonic, and it comes from Tres which there's a cognate in Welsh today, trice. Now this means violence, even oppression. But it didn't used to mean that. It used to mean might, strength. And what the Brythonic mountain tres was strong. And that's what this word means, the river strong. The river Le, or Lea, depending on how you want to pronounce it. This comes from Lugan, in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle in the 9th century, this was recorded, and we know by this point it was already a very old name. It's probably cognate with Loire in France, and up north, Leicestershire, that lay bit. And what this means is bright or light. And Lugas, which would have been the original name potentially, meant a god, uh, a Celtic god of brightness. And in Welsh it changed over time to Lle. And this became the word originally in Welsh for light. And Lle changed over time to become Golai. And then Golai, meaning light today. 
that GO at the beginning is just an intensifier. That's all it is. Literally, intense light is what light is meaning today. And that's what the river means. And I find it interesting that it's related to brightness and shininess. Because where the river flows in the River Thames is the Isle of Dogs. And you have this city full of skyscrapers and light. So in a way, the character of that place is still echoing the meaning of its original name through having so much light. I hope you got value out of this content and can see that rivers, especially, hang on to older names much longer anywhere around the world, not just in England, but in this case it shows definitely that it was a country occupied by a pre-English people. Hey, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.